Pete, item U. Um, uh, this item, I just want to bring this to everybody's attention. Uh, this is an application for a grant that I've been involved in, and, and uh, uh, Francis has been very active in it, the city clerk. Uh, it's an, it's, um, it, it, it came about as a result of uh, a conversation that I had with the city clerk some months ago, or probably a year ago now, about uh, what a wonderful space we have downstairs on the second floor that seems to be uh, unused or not certainly not used to its maximum benefit. And we started trying to figure out things we might do of an historical nature, display things we might be able to put in there. And this is, this is kind of the culmination of that. Um, I think everyone's going to be really uh, impressed with the, with the project itself. We're going to try to do something to, um, uh, to highlight the historical aspects of most of the city departments, fire, police, public works, parks. What we discovered in this process was that most of the city departments have a kind of internal historians, whether they're named that or not. There's been someone with a pack rat tendency, perhaps, that's accumulated all kinds of historical artifacts in the, and that ought to be displayed at a, in a better way than we're doing it now. And so this is, this is the first step toward trying to utilize that space on the down there on the second floor and I think it's uh, I, I'm having been involved in it since the inception and and watching it uh, move forward I think it's something we're all going to be very proud of when we get finished because it's a it's going to uh, give us an opportunity to look at some things uh, about Oklahoma City that most of us uh, uh, well I might as old as I am I probably saw most of them but uh, uh, the, some of the rest of you younger folks probably hadn't seen all those things before. So, anyway, I'm just I just want to call to everybody's attention and kind of keep on the uh, on, keep it on the radar screen because it's a it's going to be a really nice project. I think. Like a at a project. very at a very small cost to the city, by the way, with matching funds and. I think institutional memory is really important, and sometimes we don't do as good a job as we should bring those things to the forefront. It's a, it, uh, it may help us repeat uh, mistakes that have been made in the past. So I think it's important. Right. When, when you, most of these, little, excuse me, but one of these little walking tour things that you see, a little maps of downtown Oklahoma City, City Hall is always on those lists. And there are so many things inside this building that are of historical significance, not the least of which uh, is this room itself and the Art Deco chandeliers, they're, they're really, they're not, uh, uh, we, there's no other place I know of that, that, that's finished out like this building is. Um, and so I think it's going to give, it's going to actually put Oklahoma City's City Hall much more as a destination uh, for people that are doing walking tours of downtown Oklahoma City. Excuse me for interrupting. Yeah, no, it, it actually just brought up a question I had. I asked someone, I don't know if I ever got a response or followed up, but do we have any s digital storage of the pictures that you see around, pictures in the conference room of, you know, different places in the early 1900s? Are those digitally stored anywhere where we can make some kind of a, a digital, say, a CD or a DVD available to the public if they wanted a copy of those types of pictures? Do we have anything like that? Well, I don't know the answer to that. I'll find out and get back to you. Okay, and, and also maybe uh, if we don't, what, what the cost or... The, the pictures, you're talking about the photographs? That, yes. Most of those photographs were acquired from the Historical Society, and they're in their archives, and they're digitally stored at the, at the, at the Historical Society. They're not really our property. Some of the things that we're talking about putting downstairs, though, are different than that. They are not, um, they are not uh, pro property of the Historical Society. Uh, in conjunction with some, I'm involved in another organization called Retro Metro, which is a which is kind of a save the history of Oklahoma City for the last 50, 60 years organization. It's just kind of just getting started. One of the things it's doing is trying to go back into all these places and discover those photographs and save them. There are photographs in businesses in Oklahoma City that are not stored anywhere. Uh, some of that we, we found some in the Boulevard cafeteria, photographs of the old Boulevard taken 60 years ago. Uh, so there's a big effort on the underway right now to try to to really preserve all that stuff digitally. But these photographs here in the city hall are are the proper the the copyright or whatever is probably owned by the historical society. I think we bought them from the Histor historical society. 
Yeah, I just I, I to follow just, on, there's a major archive there, Brian, and okay. they have a curator that can identify, you know, by location or by era, all sorts of things. They've got great. I, my, I guess my thought was anybody who is interested, that may be a lot of hassle for them, but if it was e more easily available, they may yeah. be willing to pay 10 or $12 for a, a DVD of photographs of the city. Well, at this point, this Retro Metro organization, which is really involved in storing all these photographs in, down in, in Oklahoma City, doesn't have any short-term plans to sell it. But the, but the plant, but the the images are on uh, online now for the most part. I can get you the link, and you can uh, you could probably download them and print them yourself without. Uh, Mayor, mm -hmm. uh, I'm also working with Retro Metro on uh, the city's documents, and we are trying to. Uh, uh, scan them and make them digitized where they will be available for all the citizens to look at and that's why we encourage that there not be a charge so they're on a, uh, a website where they can be shared with with everybody so we are looking into that they're very interested in the city ordinances and getting a lot of the city ordinances from back in you know the 1890s out on the website for people there is just an absolute treasure trove of that kind of material, especially in the fire department. I think Gary probably is aware of that in the fire department. But most of the other departments have similar collections, not nearly as extensive as the fire collection is, but similar. Uh, and they just really tell a story of Oklahoma City. We're, we're also, tr the next step of this project uh, that we're talking about here under item U is to try to find a way to permanently display some of this material in city-owned buildings um, so the public will have an opportunity to see them other than just by coming to City Hall. The, we thought about the Will Rogers, uh, the facility at the Will Rogers uh, Park. Uh, we have thought about the new fire station at um, in Bricktown since it's going to be kind of a a throwback design and and so forth, uh, but um, it, it's just something we need to do. You know, if we, if we don't save it now, it won't be here to be saved 10, 15 years from now. That's right. I agree. I'm glad that work's going on in process. We ready to vote on the consent docket. Also, want to thank Leadership Oklahoma City for uh, uh, their work on the on the artwork, the Compass Rose, and look forward to, to seeing that in completion. And want to thank the Inasmuch Foundation too for their generous matching grant in that foundation. Ready to vote? All right, cast your votes. Passed unanimously.